Welcome back. This week we're gonna go with an Eastern Green Drake. This was the fly that back in the day put the Central Pennsylvania limestone streams on the map. You know, Penn's uh, Spring, Little J. The the Green Drake's really starting to make a comeback on the J. It's a tribute to you know all the work that they've done cleaning that river system up. Um, I mean, but all up and down the East Coast, I mean, you could chase this hatch for a month plus if you wanted to, starting, you know, maybe down uh, West Virginia, Wake, and uh, yeah, probably even Virginia, all the way up to Maine. You could chase this for a month and a half, maybe even two months. Um, but there is uh, no denying how big this hatch is. I mean, it, you'll see, I mean, I'm, I'm tying this on a streamer hook, and this is a mayfly. This is... This is one that everybody targets. Uh, there are so many different patterns out there. This is one that I tied as a kid. If I were to tie for this pattern nowadays, I wouldn't tie this just because the wings are a little bit tough to, to throw and everything. But we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I did this when I was a kid. And then as we go forward, I'll go into some different patterns that I would tie nowadays. Um, but to start on this, we have a size 12. Uh, Daiichi 1750 it's just a 4x long streamer hook with a ring eye um, you could go up as far as a size 8 if you wanted to I've seen these in so many different sizes depending on the year uh, depending on the river that you're the river that you're fishing and 12 is probably about a standard, but like I said, they do they do come bigger. So to start with this, I just got a thread base down with some gel spun uh, 50, and then I'm going to take a little chunk of black bucktail. Moose mane would probably be better. Uh, I'm out of that. I haven't really tied with moose mane in years. Um, brown body hair would work as well, or black body hair would work as well. Just don't use the most hollow portion of it, and that way it won't flare out on you. But this bucktail works just fine. The main portion, or the main reason for this tail is to help keep your fly afloat because it is such a big fly. Um, having the tail on there, especially out of a hollow material or non-compressible material, um, will just help your fly float a lot. And I got one hair in there that I really don't like, so I'm going to take that out and just try and line everything up somewhat decent. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect by any means, but we're going to go one and a quarter to one and a half times the length of our hook for our tail. And I'm going to go ahead and get this tied in and take this all the way to the ascent of the barb. And then I'm going to go to the front, just keeping this right on the top. This is going to help with my taper when I start dubbing this. And we'll take this probably to the two-thirds point forward. And then just cover up any of that excess. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is tie in my wings. And for my wings, I have uh, Green Drake dyed. I have this from years ago. Uh, these are Green Drake dyed mallard flakes. Um, the the naturals have a pr pretty distinct uh, green wing to them. So I have two pair. I've, I've I have a set of them, and I married them up pretty well to where I mean they're they're almost identical. They're almost identical feathers. You can see right there. Um, one's not wider than the other. Or, you know less less material, whatever it may be. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm going to do is take and measure these out to where they are just slightly 
longer than the shank of my hook and then I'm going to peel all of this stuff back. I'm going to peel this back and take all of this excess off. So now we have this excess gone. We have two stripped down wings and you can see still look really close to one another. I mean it's they're they're almost a perfect match. So there we have it right there and then what I'm going to do is take one of them and turn it the opposite direction of the other. So it's going to sit like this on my hook. So same thing, marry these up, pinch them together, make sure that they're pretty close to even and then go ahead and throw these on right where you left off with your body hair. The first couple of wraps get them pretty loose and then start making your way back. Not the entire way back because if you go back too far um, obviously the stems get thicker as you get to the bottom of them and you'll wind up having a tough time building the proper taper. So just take these back and you can see when we stand, oh, we'll stand those up here in a little bit. I was just going to peel them back but my fat fingers would be in the way so you wouldn't see it anyhow. Um, we're just going to cover this little bump up right here where we cut that off and we're going to start our taper back. This is one of the, well, I don't dub very many mayflies these days. Uh, the majority of what I do are the, you know, either a deer body, a deer hair body, or a quill body, uh, turkey bites. Very rarely will I actually dub something. But back in the day, I, I dubbed this one a lot. Um, I did tie it out of white body hair, and I'll get into that. That's more of a that's more of a coffin fly than it is the actual green drake proper. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna show you here. This this thing has been around for a very long time. Um, my cousin Darren showed me this when I was a kid, and there is probably still some of the original dubbing in here. This is just a regular Plano box, and I drilled some holes in the center of them. You throw your pack of dubbing in there pick it up from the top and you're able to just pick right there. You don't have to go searching through bags, through packages, any of that stuff. This is a really convenient and easy way to organize and store your dubbing. So we're going to get back into the body on this one. And one thing that I'm going to do, or not what I'm going to do, one thing that I will caution you on is to not rush through this body. It's very tempting, and I did this a lot as a kid, it's very tempting to just throw enough dubbing on there to do the entire body on one swoop, and then it's done, but it winds up looking like hell. It just, it's not functional. You have excess fiber sitting around, and that's something that's going to trap water, and on a fly this big, trapping water is not good. Uh, you'll, want, you'll have a tough time keeping this thing afloat. So... Just take your time, work right through this, and I got a little bit of black dye, brown dye, still on my fingers. So I'll just try and clean that up a little bit. Clean my fingers up some here, and hopefully on this next one we should have the cream look that we're after. But like I said, do this in steps. Do not rush this whatsoever, because if you do, like I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really tough to keep this thing afloat. This is a big mayfly. And I'll move this out so you can see. There's not a big difference between the diameter in my thread. Let me zoom out just a little bit. The diameter in my thread up here and the diameter of my dubbing. And that's by design. Like I said, you don't want to see a big dog leg of dubbing kicking off to the side. 
you want this nice and smooth, you want a nice transition all the way up. And the only way that you're really going to get that is by taking your time, going through five, six, seven, however many steps it takes you to get to the front. That's what you want to do. Just don't rush it. Don't rush it. Build your taper. Go little by little. And then you'll wind up having a good looking body. Another thing that you don't want to do, and this is another tempting thing, is to take your thread all the way out here and just dub a whole big noodle of it and then try and wrap it like this. I mean, if you have a rotary vise, you can, I mean, I could do it, but it, it's going to be tough to get that taper right. So just like I said, I'm going to continue to beat this horse. Uh, just take your time. Take your time on this. Don't rush through the body. So we'll throw a little bit more dubbing on here, keeping these nice and thin. I can get a little bit of extra on this. Just keep these thin. Work through it all the way up to the front. And what I'm going to do is just going to kind of have a layered effect. So I'm going to do that section. I'm going to go back to where I left off and I'm going to add some more. This will help with my taper. This will give that nice transition that you're looking for on the body. Now you don't want a huge taper. You don't want something that you know looks like a football on one end and then barely anything on the back. You just want a nice even level transition up to the front. And we're starting to get there. Probably get one more quick wrap of dubbing on here on this cream and we should be good. I'm going to call it good at that. See how we have this nice little taper here starting in the back and then we just build as we go to the front. There's nothing too extreme, there's nothing too aggressive on that taper, but we do get there just takes us a little bit longer than most mayflies because this one's so big. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is stand up my wings. And I'm just going to throw a little bit of thread in the front, work my way to the eye of the hook, get a thread base down. I'm going to stand these wings up. And I'm not going to get too picky right off the bat on this. These couple strands right there are really easy to pick out. So I'm going to get those done. And then I'm going to just come through here. And just give this a little bit more of a divide. There we have it. That one can go too. Now, if you look at the naturals, and this is the adult, this isn't the spinner, they have a pretty pronounced black section going right through the thorax. So to help with that, and also to help with putting our dubbing down, I'm going to take just a little bit of black dubbing, and this is going to ease the transition because we have a pretty good... Uh, we have it built up pretty good here and then we're going back to a bare hook. So I'm going to take some black dubbing and just run this through here. Same thing as before. Not real aggressive. Don't worry too much about your taper. You just want this stuff to have that black section in it. And I know I just covered it up with some white but I wanted that as a base. I'm going to throw my hackles in. I'll go back over with some black dubbing and then we should have a pretty clean body or a pretty clean thorax section. Um, I'm going to take two hackles on this one. One's going to be black and the other one, well I'm really getting low on this selection for black here. One's going to be black, the other one is going to be a grizzly dun. And I'll actually tie this one in first. The black one can be a little bit shorter. This Grizzly Dunn, I'll turn the package around and show you here what I'm working with in a second. 
That should be pretty close. Here's the Grizzly Dunn. Oh boy. Zoom out a little. There's the Grizzly Dunn. Um, the majority of this comes through as white, and that's really what you're looking for on this Drake. Uh, this is just what I started using a while back. Um, it has, you know, I mean, there's, there's a little bit difference in a color to it than a pure white or a cream, but it's not really noticeable, to be honest with you. So I just go with this, and it saves me buying, you know, a separate hackle just for, just for this. I use this one on some March Browns, and, you know, Adams, if I tie them anymore, I hardly ever tie those things. I need to start tying those again. They're an effective pattern. I just, I don't know. I don't really fish a whole lot of dry flies these days. Every once in a while, I mean, the water really has to be blown up for me to switch out from a streamer or a nymph, whatever it may be. I don't even nymph that much either. So I'm going to put the One second here, I'm trying not to trap this. I'm going to put the Grizzly in there first and then the black over top of it because I'm going to run the black through there first and I know you're thinking, man, what the hell did he put that black down for in the beginning? It's all covered up with thread now. All it was was building some bulk. All it was was building a little bit of bulk so there's not as much of a slope coming from my body through. I'm going to go right back through here and add some more black to it. Get this. It feels like it's just a little. Nah, it should be good. Felt like I had a little too much there. So I'm just going to run this through and just give this nice black accent that appears on the naturals. pliers and we're going to take the black hackle first and just start working right through the book right through our thorax I'm going to get about two wraps in the back and I'll just work it right to the front leave yourself a little bit of space so you're not trapping a ton of hackle Go ahead and tie this off. Now go with your Dun Grizzly and work this right through. Up to the front. Now you you want this one to be a little bit thicker. You want more white showing with the hackles. And like I said, the, the black is just, it's internal. When you actually look at the naturals on this, they don't have black legs. They're, they're like a, either a cream or a white, uh, a little bit mottled, not too much, but They do have a little difference on the, there is a little color variation on it. So it's not a pure white. And then we can stand these wings up to where they're more upright. And then I'll spin those around here in a second before I take the picture. I'm not too concerned about them right now. But there you have it. There's, there's what you're after on this green drake. I'm going to take a few of these. Hackles and cut these off just to clean the eye up a little bit and then I'm going to go ahead and whip finish. Let's see if I can get one more in there. There 
there we go. Everything's nice and clean. We don't have any obstructions on the eye. Everything's looking pretty solid. So like I said, I'll get these spun around before I take the picture. Um, but, I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. There you have it. And if you want to, you can touch that thread up just slightly with some black. Um, I'll just doll it down with some brown. doesn't really make a big difference. This is not going to make a difference whatsoever. But, there you have it. There is the Eastern Green Drake that I tied as a, as a kid. Like I said, probably not exactly what I would tie these days. Um, I'd probably do something more with uh, um, a deer hair body or something. Something to just give you a little bit more flotation. But this caught a lot of fish for me as a kid. Still will catch fish today, I promise you. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, comments, leave them with me and I'll get back to you. But thanks again for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.